friends, I recently discovered a location where you can buy used clothing, buy the pallet or the bin, whatever you want to call it. These things are huge. I am 5'6", and they are filled with clothing way taller than I am. They also had hard goods, you guys. The way this works is it's auction style. So it was explained to me that you pay anywhere. It, the auction usually starts at $40, and it can go up. But um, I decided to buy one, and I got one for $60, you guys. Uh, he said $60, and that was it, and nobody bid against me. And that was it, friends. And then you have that whole bin to yourself. You can inspect it and look through it. I didn't realize uh, this footage, uh, they weren't open yet. I was like, why isn't anyone in here? <laughs> Apparently, they weren't open yet, and I wasn't supposed to be rummaging through. But they were really nice. Um, also, I was one of the few people speaking English there. So he was, like, calling out the auction numbers in Spanish. All I caught was 40 and 100. So I knew he was saying 40 dollars or a hundred dollars so I had to ask the manager I was like um is he gonna say the numbers in English too because I only know 40 and 100 and everything else in they started laughing they were very very nice and he did speak to me in English thank god because I cannot remember how to say 60 in Spanish I could google it but I was worried I wasn't gonna get the palette anywho I got it um, and then once you win they put your name on it and you are responsible to move this yourself you guys I did ask like Will you help me if I can't move it? And they said, yes, we will help you to your car. But it is your responsibility to unpack it and to leave the empty bin there. So um, that was interesting. It was <laughs> the only time I've ever like moved a pallet of stuff like this is when I bought liquidation. Never had that happen with thrifted stuff, but I made it work. They're all, as you can see, on wheels. It was a little hard to pull, but I made it, um, and they let you pull up, and you can load up your stuff. Let's go through. I am going to go through a haul, you guys, and show you a lot of stuff that I got, so stick around to the end. Subscribe if you are new here. So I pulled up my car. I feel like this is a good angle for you to see just how tall this bin is. There are hundreds and hundreds of items in here, you guys. Um... And I will give you the final numbers, how much stuff I kept, what I did with it. It was very hot this day, and there's no, as you can see, shade. So I had to get serious. I put on some sunscreen. I put on my grandma sun visor. I love this thing. I'll link it down below. I got it on Amazon. It just uh, Velcro's on, and if you have a big head like I do, it is big head friendly. Or if you have a small head, it's small head friendly because it Velcro's to whatever you need, and it like completely protects your head from the sun. So I got serious. I got busy. I processed this whole thing in an hour and 20 minutes, you guys. I was not messing around. Um, so I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what's going on here. And then let me show you a haul of some of the amazing things that I got in this palette. This was an awesome, awesome day, friends. So let me show you. Okay, 30 minutes later, definitely keeping. These are things that are definitely going to my local women's shelter because I believe they can use some of these things. And then what they don't use, they recycle. This is all of these things, and I'm going to wash all of this stuff. All of these things are things that I'm keeping. So that bag and all of this stuff, uh, it's just stuff I wanna research, but I'm keeping. And you park really tight in here. That's great, I'm gonna have to pick that up. Okay, well, hopefully I can get out, but. That's the situation 30 minutes in. Here's what the bin looks like. I'm halfway done. You cannot even tell how big this thing is. I wasn't doing enough later this day, I went to a traditional thrift store and I did a live sell from the thrift store. Um, people have been doing this for a couple years now, you guys, where you go to the thrift store, you show the things in a live sell. So I just went live from my cell phone and um, you show the things. If they sell, you buy it. If they don't, you don't. So I've done this once before years ago on Whatnot and I really liked it. It was so much fun. Um, I think technically you're supposed to like ask the store if you can film there. I don't. My stores don't care, you guys. I have never, surprisingly, I, I feel like LA people get a bad rap, but they really don't care. As long as you leave people alone and you're like discreet, people really don't care what you do here, you guys. So some of the workers saw me filming and they could not care less. They 
just really were like, whatever. So I didn't ask. It's a very big store. I went live from here. It was so fun. People were like really engaged. Like, what are you doing? Where are we? And um, I think I'm going to try to do that once a week. I don't know when the heck I'm going to find time, but it's really fun. And the nice thing is it's kind of like you're a personal shopper and you don't have to buy anything if you don't want to, obviously, but like if it doesn't sell, you just put it back. So, um, yeah, it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. I don't have time to do it often, but like I said, I would like to do that once a week. I did it on Poshmark. Maybe I'll do it also on whatnot. I told Instagram, I don't think I told you guys, I recently went live on whatnot for the first time in six months and I made $8. <laughs> I keep it real here, friends. Everything is not always a hundred dollar profit. Uh, when you are not consistent, you don't make consistent money. So I made eight dollars in that live sell, and it was like twenty five minutes long. Surprisingly, though, I had like twenty people in the live sale, and they stayed. And I wasn't running a giveaway. I didn't do promoted or anything. So I honestly was shocked that I made any sales and that I even had any people there. So. I am going to keep doing it. If I'm being honest, you guys, I do really prefer Whatnot's live selling platform. I like their features. It just works smoother. Uh, you can do sudden death. There are certain features that they just have that are just better than Poshmark Live. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing that. Um, going live at both places, but enough about live selling. I just, that came to my mind because this footage you're seeing what I did was I shopped first and then I showed all of these things on camera and started the auctions and if they wanted it, they bought it. So I actually, these Oak and Fort pants are actually listed. Those are brand new uh, with the tags. If you can remember to five minutes ago, that first shirt that I showed you in this clip, Brenda Bodum or something, it's a Canadian brand. Comps actually look pretty good even though it was just a plain navy shirt. That is a new to me brand. I'd never heard of it. Made in Canada, a little bit obscure but I'm hoping to get like 20 to 25 bucks for that top. I love searching in the off season um, areas, you guys. I, this was filmed in June, so I love looking at the coats, the jackets, the pants. I've done dedicated videos on just shopping, like in, starting in the off season area. So if you're filming, if you're you know, if it's July, look at the coats, look at the boots, look at the shoes, look at the pants, because the average shopper that's just shopping for themselves, they're probably not looking through that stuff, and you can really find some gems that way. I do know that a lot of my customers on the live sales really want dresses, so I did buy, or I did pick up uh, a lot of dresses to show in the live sale. I love this location, you guys. I don't get the chance to come here very often, but it is one of the bigger stores in Los Angeles and they just have really good inventory. They do mark stuff up. They know their brands, but sometimes things slip through the cracks. Um, so I told you guys, every time I go thrifting, I find Shein. It never fails. That is one of the brands that every single time I go thrifting in Los Angeles, I find Shein, I find Ann Taylor, Banana Republic, Theory, Yes, there are about 10, case in point, Banana Republic, there are about 10 brands that I know if I step into a thrift store in my city, I'm going to find these brands. I just rattled off a couple for you. This is 100% Silk Banana Republic top. I would actually pick this up at $4.99. Is that what, I think the price was $4.99, but it, as you can see, had, um, it, I don't know if you could see the staining, but it had staining and it just wasn't in the best condition. You really have to be careful with silk pieces, but um, anything 100% uh, silk, linen, and sometimes cotton from Banana Republic. I always stop in my tracks and look up comps because they can do really well. This Aritzia top was cute, but for $7.00. I don't think so. I thought it was new um, with the tags. It was not. If it was new with the tags, I would pick it up. Uh, Aritzia stuff can do pretty well. Aritzia is not affordable either. We recently, I shouldn't say recently, but within the last couple of years, they opened a store here because like 10 years ago, we did not have Aritzia stores here. Did Do you guys have Aritzia in your city? We did not anywhere. Now we have like two or three. Um, and I went in there and holy moly, like that top in the store new would probably be like 40, 
maybe 30 if they were having a sale. Pretty little thing. That's another brand, Fashion Nova, another brand. Every single time I go thrifting, it is in the thrift store. Do people just buy these things new and then just like wear it once and donate it? I just assume they disintegrate in the washing machine when you wash it once and then they poof into thin air and you never see them again. Oh, sassy Nikki. All right, let's get into the haul of the Goodwill palette stuff because that's what we're all here for, right? We want the tea on how the Goodwill palette went. There's that shirt that I was just telling you about. There we go. I picked this up. I'll let you know how it sells. Okay friends, so welcome to the haul portion of this video. I'm sure this video is already very long. I'm not going to show you everything I kept, but spoiler alert, I kept about 100 items. I think it was like the exact number was like 97. There were hundreds of items in that bin. I don't think my camera, the scale, did it just, like the bin you saw was taller, like f taller than I was, full of clothing. Um, let me know your thoughts down below after we go through the haul portion if you would have paid $60 for this. I'm leaning towards yes, considering I got 90 plus, 90 plus pieces to either sell on consignment, um, at ThreadUp, or the real, real sell myself, uh, list, live sell. I have multiple ways of selling, so I don't know that I would do this like weekly. I <laughs> just don't, I, I'm a one man, one man show. But I would definitely probably do this again. A couple of updates before we get into it. Number one, the email list is ready, friends. You guys have been asking me, Nikki, where is the Bolo clothing list? If you are new around here and you're like, what are you talking about? I do a lot of videos where I talk about brands that are Bolo brands. I mean, I was spaced out a little. I was going to say brands that are popular brands that you should be on the lookout for. Be on the lookout for. That's what Bolo means. I've created a free list, you guys, over a hundred brands. All you have to do is give me your email and you're part of the email group. If you don't want to be on the email list, that's totally fine. You can unsubscribe at any time. It's totally free to get the hundred um, I'm calling it like an ebook slash PDF. I took this took me a lot of time, you guys. So hopefully you guys appreciate it and enjoy it. And then you'll be part of the email list where I will email you once a week with updates of things that's going on, new brands I'm on the lookout for, what's selling, what's not selling. Similar to what we do here on YouTube, but more of a personal touch written by myself like I will be writing the emails I'll email you once a week like I said I'm really doing this because I want to build a community within our little community I want it to be helpful informative and you guys have said that you would really appreciate that so joining the email list totally free get your hundred brand bolo list and then if you don't want to be on the email list you can unsubscribe I hope you don't stick around and then I'm coming with in the next week or two, I'll have the Discord group ready. The Discord group, full disclosure, will not be free because that's going to be, I'm envisioning it being like a sourcing Discord group. It's not like a mentorship or anything. Um, it's not like a one-on-one -on -one thing or anything like that, but I will basically be giving you a glimpse into how I source and giving you some different avenues on ways to source. But there will be more info coming on that. If you join the email list, they'll get first dibs to enter that discord group because I really want to keep it small so that you guys can get the best deals out there. But I'm going to share some tips on how I get some designer things, how I get clothing, retail arbitrage, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that'll be coming in the next couple weeks. But the first link in the video and the comments is the link to get the bolo list. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Let me know your thoughts. I want that to be a running document. So I'll probably update that at least twice a year. Don't quote me on that. But um, there will be updates done to that. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I'm really excited to start our little community in our little community. Let's get into the haul, you guys. Some of it is the stuff down here I just washed. That stuff in there was dirty. I washed everything. All of the 90 plus pieces I kept have been washed. Um, so there's stuff down here that's been washed, but I want to steam. There's some really good stuff in here, you guys. I, I don't even know what my cost of goods was because once I got over 60 items, I was like, well, we're at less than 
a dollar per item. Let's just say I got 90. That's 67 cents per item. I've never gotten that cost of goods ever that low ever anywhere point blank period. It was a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. I think if you are going to do that, you probably should take someone with you so you can have some help. I was moving and I'm sure I mentioned this in the video. I was going fast, you guys. From the time I got the palette to the time I was done processing it was probably like an hour and a half, but I was sweating, it was hot, it was sunny. You can tell there are professionals there. So any of you that have ever purchased any type of palette, whether it's new, whether it's um, thrifted stuff, it it's a lot of work. Uh, a num the number one, first of all, I posted a short form video saying that I was planning on buying the palette. I think I've probably mentioned this. I was not expecting that video to blow up the way it did and it's always very obvious when your vid video blows up outside of like the reselling world because people are like asking me oh is it new like is all that clothing new i'm thinking in what world can you get hundreds of pieces of clothing new for 40 dollars? come on i wish if that were the case i probably wouldn't have shown you guys that video <laughs> People were like saying, oh, you're horrible, you're going to get bed bugs, you're going to get scabies. I'm like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so um, <laughs> this is the stuff, you guys, I already cleaned. I might keep this. This is a Bound, which I believe is Target. Is this their like juniors line? I don't shop clothing at Target very often, you guys, but this is a size large and it fits me. So I was like, maybe this, this can't be juniors. Anyways, I've already cleaned this. Super cute. Um, and it has the elastic waist. I don't, I don't buy a lot of Target clothing and I don't sell a lot of it. I did post a video about what selling Wild Fable jeans. Like I pick up very specific styles and usually plus size, but I thought this would be cute to keep for myself or sell on a live sell. I did get a ton of mall brands in this palette. I got, um, Banana Republic and Taylor. I'm very happy with that. I know a lot of you probably don't sell it. They're bread and butter brands for me, you guys. I sell Banana Republic blazers, coats, jackets, dresses all the time, like a couple times a week. Um, so, and then I also got some old Navy stuff that I wasn't super excited about, but a lot of it is new, new. This is brand new without the tags, never been worn, size six, old navy corduroy, high-waisted skirt in great condition. It did um, have the tag, but I just took it off, you guys, because like I said, that bin was just so dirty. I had to wash everything. I just, the bin that the clothing was actually in was dirty. And there was like a layer of clothing at the bottom that was wet. <laughs> It was a process, friends. I, yeah, so I've washed everything. This one I've already steamed. This is new with the tags Forever 21. If I'm being totally honest, these two, like if I were at the Goodwill, I would have passed these, even though they are new with the tags. Well, if I found this on $2 day, I would have picked it up because it is new with the tags. Um, it's a crochet sweater dress. It gives me so many vibes. This is like something I would include in a live sell and someone could get a really good deal on this. I think this is, I mean, I would wear this. It's really cute. So I also uh, took from the bin this Forever 21 oversized floral uh, top. The things that are hung up, you guys, I'm planning on probably selling in a whatnot sell or a Poshmark live sell. So if you're interested in any of this stuff and you want a deal, because you guys know the behind the scenes because you're here, I paid 67 cents per item. So if you want a deal, I'm going to start a lot of this stuff at five to 10 bucks. Um, come and get a deal on a lot of this stuff. So I'm probably going to sell those two together as a bundle. This dress I cleaned up. This is mod cloth and this is a size large. If you've never seen the mod cloth tag, there it is. Really flowy. I love the lace detail. It has pockets. Um, and I was just really excited to find a dress. There were so many items in there, you guys, that were just too heavily stained. They were just too heavily stained for me to even try to like, you know, bring them back to life. This is a Torrid super soft knits um, top in a size 3X, really soft and stretchy. Um, this one, I've actually sold this exact shirt before for $20 on eBay. Um, I am very selective with Torrid 
I try not to pick up like the basic like black, blue, like one color pieces. I don't know, for some reason the uh, more vibrant stuff like this seems to do the best for me and especially the super soft line. Here, let me show you the tag. This one is, a, I guess it's really popular. Check out um, the sell-through rate and the size that you have because it does pretty well for me. Um, let me see. Some of this stuff is not from the Goodwill palette. Some of this stuff is from all over the place. So I'm just trying to pick out the pieces I got from the palette. I'm assuming this is vintage. Have any of you ever heard of this brand? RJ & Co. It's made in the USA. It's a size 16. I just thought this was so cool. I was like, I have to save this one. This one was um, laying on top. I gave it a good wash. I gave it a good steam. I was not messing around with this. I know I just posted a video saying I don't steam everything, but that bin, I was just like, I've got to like make sure I, I, I treat everything. I just love the print on this. Um, vintage clothing does not measure the way that um, a size 16 would today because I measured the bust and I think it was like 18 or 19 inches. So honestly, I would think this would fit more like a 10 to maybe 14. Um, I feel like on a 16, it might be a little snug, but I just loved the print. And it is just very rare that I find things that are made in the USA um, that are like more current pieces. This is one of my favorite pieces in the whole thing. I sell Tahari blazers all the time, you guys. This blazer, brand new, was over retailed for over $200. I thought about keeping this. It's my size. I'm pretty sure this is a size 6. Um, maybe a size four, but it fits me like a glove. I love their blazers. If you're looking for a good blazer that'll last you years and you can find it for a decent price, Tahari is the way to go, you guys. Um, and I loved the pink interior of this one. So it's missing the size tag, but it's got the three buttons and it has the material tag, but I'm gonna say this fits like a six. And then when you put this on, let me show you. <laughs> I wanna keep this so bad, you guys, but I literally have probably at this point like 10 Tahari blazers. Anytime I find them at a thrift store or consignment store my size, I keep them. I've never purchased it used. Look, I love this cutout detail. The only reason I'm like, is this a four? Because I am a bustier size six and it's really snug. I can get in it. But I'm thinking this might be more like a four, but it fits my arms perfectly. I just look how structured this is, and I love the little cutout detail. So I'm excited for this to find a new home. I can't keep any more blazers, but seriously, they're really good quality, really well made. And sometimes they add a little flair. This is a little flair for Tahari. <laughs> they're known for doing like basic colors, navies, like timeless pieces that are meant to last you years, but they're not going to do like a... Well, I've never seen it, like a unique print blazer, maybe like Zara or Anthro would do. And it does have shoulder pads, which can easily be removed. So that was one of my favorite pieces in there. All right, that's everything that's hung up from the palette. Oh, no, these are in there. These rag and bone shorts. Um, these are size 27, and I think they're the vintage high rise. Vintage, what is, oh, it's on the tag vintage cutoff high rise short there wasn't a ton of stuff in there you guys that was new this looks new it literally looks like no one's ever worn it really good condition so i love selling rag and bone i will say it is a slower mover for me you guys it does not sell very fast <laughs> like i could have some rag and bone for months before it sells but when it sells for some reason i tend to get full price for it all right, these are the things that have been washed, but they need to be steamed to get the wrinkles out. This is Venezia, Veniza, Venezia, men's jacket or coat. I looked up some comps on this. I think this might be all right. This is size 22, 24. I've never sold this brand before, um, but I'm already stocking up on coats and things, you guys, for um, fall. I'm always thinking a season ahead, as you should be too. All right, back to school, we'll be here before you know it. This is a Tommy Hilfiger um, kid size extra large 16, eight. This is, does that mean this is supposed to fit a 16 slash 18 year old? 
because this looks like my four-year-old could fit it. This must have shrunk. I'm going to have to look this up. There's no way. <laughs> I'm going to have to, I know nothing about kid sizing, you guys, but I'm going to have to look that up because that does not look like that would fit a 16 or 18-year-old. Definitely keeping this for my four-year-old. Cute little Mickey t-shirt. Don't worry, I've already washed it. Um, it's still in really good condition. The funny thing is, he has this exact shirt. He had it when he was one, and I still have it for my one-year-old, so now they can wear matching shirts. That's hilarious. I have sold this exact trench from J. Crew before like 10 times. When I tell you this is gonna cover the cost of the palette plus put me in the profit, I've sold these used for over $120. Can I get it on? The thing about these is you definitely, if you find these J. Crew trenches, you want to steam them, you guys, because presentation is everything. Usually the type of person that's buying this, they want to see how it's going to look when they wear it to work, when they wear it to a meeting. So it's wrinkled. I washed it, um, but I'm going to steam it. I think you're technically supposed to dry clean these because I remember finding one at the bins and I actually took it to my dry cleaner. This one also fits me perfectly. What size is this? Because I have too many coats. I don't need another coat. Dang, is this missing the size tag too? They cut the size tag out? Ugh. <sighs> Let's see, does it have the material tag? Oh, it's dry clean only. Well, well, why don't you look at that? Anyways, <laughs> full length, or not full length, but almost full length J. Crew trench, dry clean only. I'm gonna give it a good steam and it'll be good to go. I was looking to see if it had a belt, but there's no belt. This is a new to me brand, and I looked up this sweatshirt, you guys, and this brand, this exact sweatshirt retailed for $120. Um, the brand is Eastside Golf. It's a size extra small. This had a ton of stains. Oh, what happened to the camera? There we go. It had a ton of stains. I got all the stains out on the front. But I can't get this one out. Sometimes, you guys, with stain treating, you have to just keep repeating the process. Sometimes it takes a couple of times to get the stains completely out. So definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. I've never heard of this brand. You guys know I love selling men's clothing. I'm assuming this is men's. Yeah, I went to the website and I don't... Maybe they make women's clothing, but I, I, this sweatshirt was um, modeled on a guy, so... But I feel like that could be unisex. I'm gonna stain treat that again and try to get that stain out. It had a ton of stains on the front. I got all of those out. So I just use my grandma's secret stain treating spray. I rub it in, I let it sit for 30 minutes, I wash it. Um, and 90% of the time that stuff works. I will leave a link to it down below. I get it on Amazon. It's not that expensive. I think I get two bottles for $17. Listen, you guys, I've told you, I'm not a stain treating queen. I'm not gonna do like baking soda, Dawn dish soap, unless it's a really pricey piece. I just don't do that. I don't have the time. So I know I'm probably missing out on money by not doing that. So if it's a piece that's really high value, I'll actually just take it to my dry cleaner and he gets like everything out. But if it's something that I can just spray with grandma's cleaner, we're good to go. These are Columbia pants. They're size six long. I'm pretty sure these are women's. I've sold, no, I know they are because I've sold this exact pant. Oh no, I thought I got all the stains out. This one, a lot of the stuff, you guys, full transparency, a lot of stuff in that palette was very heavily stained. So it's going to take some work. So I got everything for 67 cents each, but some of this stuff is just going to take multiple rounds of stain treating. And I really hope I can get it out because some of this stuff I could, you know, honestly, if I just sell that J. Crew coat, we're in the money, or if I sell that, um, that golf sweatshirt we're in the money these are john galt which is brandy melville but something is wrong with these so they're 100 percent cotton and they're very rigid is that something that happens to um cotton jeans when they're just like not cared for properly because they literally feel like they have starch in them do you guys remember that stuff my grandma used to spray it on stuff but if you use too much, it's not starch. What is that stuff called? <laughs> no one uses this anymore. I remember my grandma would spray her stuff 
and, and before she ironed it but it kind of made your stuff stiff like this so I think these might be a um, redonate because I don't know it, I don't know what happened to the cotton there but it doesn't feel like that's how they're supposed to feel I could be wrong this is a cute little Lulu's wrap crop top so you tie it around the front it's a size large this is actually in perfect condition um, I feel like this would be a good piece for live sell or uh, I might list it I actually do okay selling Lulu's I just sold a Lulu's dress in my live sell yesterday for like 25 bucks that I got uh, where did I get that I think I got it from Goodwill. Um, this, I find Lulu's a lot. They have their factory here, their distribution. This is Stars Above pajama top. I'm going to keep this. It's a size small and it's 100% cotton. Anytime, you guys, I find pajamas in my size in cotton or silk, I usually keep them because I love sleeping in cotton and silk. This is an Adidas. Oh, this one came clean. That's good. Adidas, you know, the traditional Adidas t-shirt. This had a ton of stains. I stain treated this and they're all gone. This one is a size large. Maybe I get like 10 to 15 bucks for that. But every single piece adds up, you guys. This is Bershka. Uh, how, what is happening here? Are these two items? Is it stuck together? Hang on, friends. Any coat or jacket that I could find in this palette that was in somewhat decent condition, I wanted to make sure I kept because I knew that those would really put me in the problem. Oh, this is the Obey jacket. So I also found one from Bershka. Isn't that H&M? This is Obey. I found a sold comp for this exact jacket uh, for, I think, 40 bucks. This one wasn't even that stained. It just had a really bad smell. So I sprayed my... I would actually wear this in the fall. I love wearing men's items sometimes. They're just really oversized and comfortable. Um, it had a bad smell. I do have a odor eliminator spray. I also get it on Amazon. It's great. I spray it on the item and I just let the item sit out for a day and it does wonders. Some of you have told me to use vinegar. Is that what you guys said? I, apparently vinegar, some people have told me, like one of my reselling friends told me he actually uses alcohol, like vodka and that really works at neutralizing smells oh this is what was attached the hood detaches so hopefully i can get like 30 to 40 bucks for this um i saw a sold comp for that exact one then we also have this one state which is a nordstrom house brand right because i remember when i got my nordstrom palette this was one of the brands i got a lot of let me show you the tag one state little oversized tank top with adjustable straps and then it has um, embroidery on the straps so let me grab the rest of the stuff there's a lot of stuff